Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault 2, and I'm out here in the garage to make a multi-purpose video. The first part is to talk about upcoming projects. I was able to go see my friend Jack number two today and return some firearms that I have reviewed and done some from the vault videos with, and he got me three awesome pistols to show you tonight and guns that I will get to review. And I'm really proud of myself because I've been working really hard at trying to get through the big stack of firearms I had to review. And I think I only have one left from all like the big projects. It's a Knight's Armament SR-25 pistol, which is on loan to the channel from D. But I got these three to put in the queue and I got guns I got to get back to other people. And I need to reach out to Jack number one because he contacted me a few weeks ago telling me that he had a couple of pistols for me to review as well. I just have not been over on that side of town to pick them up, but I got a four day weekend coming up. So I think I'm gonna to try to make that trek over there uh, to see him, especially because I got the projects kind of dwindling down and I've really kind of gotten caught up on things. And then the other part of the video I wanna do is the kind of episode two or part two to responding to the mean comments of the week. You guys seem to kind of like that, so I'll kind of show you some of the best comments I got this week and kind of respond to them and talk about my thoughts. But let's do the upcoming projects first. One is a firearm I have actually been asked many times if I have reviewed because, once again, I started off as the Fort Worth Colt guy many, many, many years ago. And people always ask me, what do you think of this pistol? And I have never gotten to shoot one, but I'm going to get that opportunity now. We're gonna be taking a look at the Colt Double Eagle, double action, I guess we'll say this is a 1911, or 1911 style gun. Uh, it's a double action, single action. Now I have reviewed a double action only 1911, but because this is double action, single action, this receiver is completely different than most 1911s. It looks like a 1911 up here on top, but it functions very different. It doesn't have a grip safety on it, doesn't have a manual safety on it. It does have a decocker, uh, kind of like a SIG. I guess I can just cock the hammer and I can decock it that way, just like a SIG P-Series pistol. It's in stainless steel. I can tell you the... Uh, double action pull on this is really heavy, but actually kind of smooth. And I think the single action is kind of mushy. I know that Colt discontinued these. Uh, I don't think they were that popular a pistol. Some people love them and some people hate them. So I'm really excited to get a chance to shoot this. So the Colt Double Eagle chambered in... Is this in 10? I believe this is in 10. Yes, 10 millimeter. I have two guns on the table in 10 millimeter uh, in this cycle. So hopefully I have enough 10 millimeter ammo. Uh, the next one we'll go ahead and keep in the vein of the 10 millimeter stuff. We have the OG of 10 millimeters. The Bryn 10. Yes. I have never gotten to handle one of these in person. I have seen them, and this is really, really cool. And I guess this is kind of like the Miami Vice gun. Uh, so semi-automatic, double action, single action, chambered in 10 millimeter, uh, stainless steel. I have to really do my research on these. I know there's a lot of people that collect these, want to get all the different variations of them. Um, some of this kind of looks like a CZ-75. Some of it kind of looks like a 1911. It's really kind of interesting. And it has uh, two safeties on it. You got a frame-mounted safety. So when the hammer's back, you can use it that way. And it also has a safety that you can push through the slide. Really interesting. I guess that's more of a firing pin block. But that is really interesting. So... Chambered in 10 millimeters, so this is going to be a lot of fun, especially because it's a classic gun that people just seem to love. It just kind of has that mystique to it, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And the other one is another Bren 10, but I guess it's not a Bren 10 because it's not in 10 millimeter. This one is in 45, so I guess this is just a Bren. I have to look that up. As I said, these are guns I don't have as much just kind of cursory knowledge on. So I'll definitely be doing 
uh, my research on. Uh, on the slide, this one says Logan Custom. So I'm not really sure what that means. Um, same concept with the safeties. Uh, this one says Marksman Special Match 45. I'll cover up the serial number, but you can see there on the slide what it says. If anybody can tell me anything about this, I would appreciate it, or any resources I need to investigate. Now, both of these pistols, something I think is very, very ugly and very, very stupid, is on both pistols, they put this big paragraph on the side, and it says, free manual available from Dornis and Dixon, I guess, Enterprises Incorporated, Huntington Beach, California. So I guess they're the manufacturers, and they tell you where you can get that manual. And, of course, they're no longer in business as far as I know. But now I got this big paragraph on the side of this beautiful gun. That is ugly. Why, why do gun companies do that? That is gross. Don't do that. If you're ever going to start up a gun company, do me a favor. Don't do what Beretta does. Don't do what they did and put paragraphs. I don't need to know to read the owner's manual before using the gun or this gun fires without a magazine inserted. That should be common knowledge and don't tell me where to get the manual. This is ridiculous. But besides that, it's a cool gun, right? I'm really excited to get a shoot, uh, shoot this. And stainless steel, it just has a really cool look to it. So those are the new guns that are going into the queue. Uh, I'll probably take one or two of those along when I go and shoot that SR-15 SR pistol from Knight's Armament on Long to the Channel from D. So that's the upcoming projects. What do you guys think? What should I know about them? And what do you guys know about these that I should know? All right. So that is the upcoming project. So in case now you want to flip away because you're like, I hate it when Jason does this. I get that comment from time to time. I'm giving you that opportunity. So I was courteous to you. So if you want to flip away now because you got your input on the uh, what the upcoming projects are. Well, let me give you the word of the day before you leave. The word of the day is going to be 10. 10. The, the, the number 10 or spelled out T-E-N. And use that in your comment because the Bryn 10 and the Colt Double Eagle in 10 millimeter. Okay? So there you go. You can now click away. I'll give you two seconds. And if you stayed, you want to know about the comments. All right. So I think I got five or six comments from this week that I saved. Uh, these aren't all the, the mean comments. Some of them I think are kind of mean. Some of them I think are closed-minded. And some of them I think are just mean-spirited. And they, they, they might not be so mean, but they just either bothered me enough where I just had to include them in this little list. So the first one we have, and I get a lot of comments on this video. It's going to go back to the CRS Firearms, Poke the Bear, Matthew Hoover is not 100% innocent. And... I got a comment from Matt Buchanan, 9765, who said, maybe consider go F yourself. Yeah, there, there you go. So that's, a, that's keeping it classy right there. Um, just because he disagrees with my point of view that maybe Matt Hoover made some poor decisions to get him in the place where he's at, um, I should have this comment, apparently. So, obviously, this person just got banned. I didn't even respond to them. But I get this stuff all the time. Just because they disagree with me, they feel like they need to act in this manner. And I find it to be very, very sad. They don't want to have a debate. They don't want to talk about it. Uh, they don't want to have a respectful dialogue. It's just, go after yourself. How pitiful is that? But I... I guess, you know, I guess I understand because he's, he's mad at me. He's like, oh, you think differently than me. And I guess because I, I don't, you know, toe the anarchy line uh, when, it, when it comes to the civil society. Um, anyway, he felt like he needed to say that. So the first comment, probably the meanest, maybe consider, go F yourself. So there you go. That's the first comment. All right. So now... The next comment is going to be on the same video because this one attracts all the crazies. It really does. Um, this one is coming from Mike Henthorn, 1778. And uh, we have a very attractive picture of this gentleman here on his uh, profile picture. And it says, just from your response to posts, I can see no reason to watch or sub you. 
if you feel that a picture of anything on anything and working to sell said picture is grounds to be in jail, I don't think you have understood what the founders wrote. You know, this is somebody that I think is looking at the whole auto key card thing from a very simplistic point of view and refuses to open their mind to the minutia of an argument. You know, it's it's not about a drawing on a piece of metal. That's not the issue. It's not about um, the fact that people couldn't make it into what he claimed. In fact, well, I guess it is kind of that thing because you it is illegal in the United States, first of all, okay, to advertise and sell a product that does not do what you claim it does. Like I cannot sell you a product and say, I don't know, I'm looking right here. Okay, let's just say I, I come up with Texas Gun Vault pins and I say, hey, I have created the best pen. This is the best pen. You need to go buy the Texas Gun Vault pen. It can write underwater. It can write in space. It can do all these things. It can write in multiple colors. It, all this, and, and it's permanent. It can write on uh, things you can't write. And then you buy it, and it doesn't do any of those things, okay? That is illegal, okay? Now, is it go to jail illegal? Well, I guess it depends on the level of fraud. But number one, that is fraud. You're being dishonest, okay? And I personally think in the gun community, we need to be good to each other. So if you're going to sell a product, you need to be honest about what it is. If he would have marketed this as, hey, everybody, this is an etching on a piece of metal that is in the shape of a lightning link. However, it's not the right dimensions. It's too thick and you can't get it to work. It's just a piece of uh, metal and that's all it is. I really feel like he would not be where he's at because nobody would have bought those with the um, intention of possibly getting around the NFA. Now, do I think the NFA is constitutional, should be on the books? No. But people bought it because, think about it, they sent in cash and told him to mail these objects to places where they don't live. So if they didn't really, if they really thought this was a piece of art, why would he offer a service where he would mail it to a place that you don't live so it can't be tracked and you can pay in cryptocurrency and cash and other ways that are not traceable to you. You know, if, if it's just a piece of artwork, right? So people knew what this was or believed they knew what it was, okay? So he's defrauding the gun industry. He's making a product that doesn't do what he claims it does. He is potentially putting people that may not know better, that are ignorant, in potential violation of the law, because let's say his product actually worked and these people bought these products with the intention of it working, he is jeopardizing the lives and the um, careers and the freedom of other gun owners who might come afoul of law enforcement because of, of, of his product. He was endangering, I think, people that, you know, maybe criminals tried to buy these for full auto conversions, you know? So he could have been selling these to people with nefarious purposes. There's a lot of stuff going on here, okay? In my opinion, does it mean he should be spending the rest of his life in jail? No. He made poor choices, and it's not just selling a picture. If he would have advertised it as, I'm selling a picture on a piece of metal that doesn't do anything, we wouldn't be here talking about it. But this is sad because so many gun owners are trained to be closed-minded and not understand the nuance of arguments and the law. And this is why the anti-gunners will always win. Because they understand the nuance and they understand how to play the game. And many gun owners are like Neanderthals. They're, they're, they're incapable of deeper thought. It's just one thing black and white. And anyway, that's what it is. But he says, just from your response, I can see no reason to watch or sub you. But apparently, it was worthy of a comment. So for a temporary amount of time, I lived rent-free in his head. All right. Let's go to, let's see what another one is. All right. 
Here we go. This is actually on a Texas Gun Vault 2 video. This is the Texas Gun Vault 2 Garage Gun Talk Thoughts on the ATF Raid in Arkansas. So this is one of my recent videos that I made here. And blippity bloppity bloop said, I'll just downvote and move on. Laugh my ass off. The ATF is at fault just a little bit? Really? Don't be surprised when this happens to you and your family because you defend the tyrants that are more willing to kill you for practicing your constitutionally protected rights, Benedict Arnold. All gun laws are unconstitutional. Give them an inch and they'll take a mile. Have you learned nothing in your 44 years? Well, once again, he says, I'll just downvote and move on. Well, he didn't just downvote and move on. He actually took the time to write a paragraph out. So I guess I win because I'm living rent-free in his head. It bothered him enough that he just couldn't downvote and move on. But let's break this one down. Is the ATF at fault just a little bit? Well, yeah. I mean, you guys know I'm, I'm against no-knock warrants, and I talk about that in that video. And he says, don't be surprised when this happens to you and your family because you defend the tyrants that are more than willing to kill you for practicing your constitutionally protected rights. Well, let's talk about this. Am I trying to sell firearms? Nope. I don't do that. In fact, anytime I personally buy a gun, it almost never leaves my collection. I would say out of all the guns that I personally own, I have probably sold five or six. I mean, and that's because I would get the gun, I would own it for a certain period of time and think it sucks. Like for example, I'll tell you a gun I made a mistake on buying was the Walther CCP, the Concealed Carry Pistol. It's a gas piston delayed thing, kind of like an HKP-7. I thought it would be cool because of that system. I was like, it's got to be kind of like a P7, right? Uh, no, it sucks. Oh, God, the trigger is terrible. In fact, I even traded for that gun. It was terrible. It was the worst decision I ever made. Because I think I traded something nicer, like a 22 rifle or something for that gun. And I shoot it. And I'm like, this thing sucks. I, I, I was all into the mechanics of it. And I was like, you know, I like Walther. Walther makes good guns. And I got it and I hated it. And then I, I kept it in my safe for, I don't know, a couple of months. I took it back to the range, tried to give it another shot. And I ended up hating it. I was like, man, this thing is, it's taking up space in my safe that could be used for another gun. I'm going to move on from this thing. So, I wanted to love it. I, I thought it was going to be a permanent piece and fixture in my collection, and it was not. But that's usually what ends up happening. And But very few firearms ever leave my collection. Uh, sometimes I will sell one because I need funds to get another gun. Like uh, years and years ago, I owned a Colt Python. Uh, I think it was made in 1977. Beautiful gun, royal blue, six-inch barrel. And I know some people are like, you traded that? Yeah, I bought it for like $1,400. And I ended up selling it for $2,500 like four years or five years later when the prices started to go crazy. And they're worth even more now. But I wanted the HK SP5K. And I needed the funds. And when I looked at it, would I rather have a Colt Python or an HK SP5K? SP5K. And that's just me. So I ended up selling it. I had it for like four or five years. I think I shot it once. And it was going to be a fixture of my collection forever. But... When HK brought that thing out, I had to have one and I needed to sell something to, to afford it. So that's usually what happens. But because I do that, I am not in the business of selling firearms. I don't try to make money. In fact, I lose money on, on gun stuff because I don't know, because I buy it, never, you know, I never, I collect it essentially. And probably my heirs are going to reap the benefits of that. But yeah, I'm not in the business. In fact, businesses rely on me to stay, you know, <laughs> to make money. Uh, so I don't do that. I My firearms that I have, uh, you know, ended up selling or trading, I do bills of sale on. So if they end up at a crime scene, like this guy in Arkansas's guns did, and I have law enforcement uh, reach out to me, of course, I'll talk to my attorney, but I can go and get all the bills of sale and go, okay, this firearm ended up at a crime scene and blah, blah, blah. And I can go, well, here's what happened. I legally sold it here in Texas. Here is the name of the person, their information, who took possession of it, and 
you know, that, and that's it. And so I can give that information to them, right? That's it. So why would the ATF just come and kill me, right? Why would they do that? Because I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to do. I don't live in the gray area. It is very obvious that this person um, that in Arkansas was doing bad things, okay? Do I think the ATF was heavy-handed? Absolutely. Do I think somebody should be held accountable for this? Yes. Should these policies be looked at? Yes. A lot of this stuff, do we need to see the body cam footage? Yes. We need to see all this stuff. It needs to be put into the light of day. But like Matt Hoover, this moron in Arkansas brought this on himself. Okay, if he wasn't buying 25 Glock 19s and then going to a gun show the very next day and selling them and then them not turning up in crime scenes, he would not be having a problem. I think what he saw was a, a way to maybe make some quick money. He wasn't thinking about the ramifications. He wasn't thinking that this, this would happen. And uh, it did. But I do want to address another thing he said in here. All gun laws are unconstitutional. no. They're not unconstitutional because we use Supreme Court precedent to decide what is and is not constitutional. Now, the um, you know, Heller decision uh, and the Bruin decision talk about if a law was not on the books in the you know during the founding of, of the country when the Constitution was ratified and the Second Amendment was ratified, uh, it's not a constitutional law. But guess what? At that time, there were gun laws on the books. Now, were they as extensive as they are today? No. But there were laws like you can't carry, and Scalia admits it, that you can't carry dangerous and unusual weapons in public. That was a common law in that time. So that is a constitutional law. Now, most gun laws that we deal with today, I absolutely agree, are unconstitutional. However, isn't there some gun laws that I think that we can all agree on? And I'll listen, I'm a libertarian, okay? But libertarian doesn't mean anarchist. So, for example, I'm just curious what this blippity bloppity bloop person would think of maybe a criminal uh, in their hometown uh, using somebody that is essentially just converting semi-automatic guns to full auto, selling them on the street, and then using them to rob houses. And his house gets robbed and maybe his family gets a killed. Would he be going, well, this is a tragedy, but you know what? I'm, all, I'm totally okay with this unfettered, unregulated gun market that's literally just down the street. I don't think the police should do anything about it. Obviously, we would go, you know, is it really going to stop the hardcore and determined criminals? No, it's not. Okay? We all, we, we all know that. But many gun laws put a, at least a minimal barrier, okay? A minimal barrier between someone that is not intelligent from doing something rash and illegal, okay? And it's not really a huge infringement upon you, okay? So, for example, uh, I argue, I argue uh, that, that, for example, let's just say a law where he says you can't carry a firearm into a courthouse, Okay? Is that an infringement upon me? Well, I don't really go to courthouses that often, but when I do, they have bailiffs and they have security there. So they're responsible for that security. And I understand that they probably don't want, let's say a, a gang member is on trial and uh, someone is on the stand that's a witness against them. They don't want somebody off the street just coming in with a gun who might be on one of the gang member sides coming in there and just killing people because it's a witness and speaking out against the person on trial. I think that we could all agree that maybe in that situation, we can be reasonable about this, right? I mean, I mean, we can go to the other end of the spectrum and agree that, okay, uh, let's say the NFA, Okay, it's unconstitutional. Why is a 16-inch barrel legal and a 15.9-inch barrel on a rifle illegal? That's absolutely stupid at ass night. It does absolutely nothing. So we can totally agree on that one. But there are some gun laws that I think most reasonable and rational people will agree with. And if you have the position that all gun laws are unconstitutional, you are never going to win the center the people that would vote for your side are going to abandon you and they're going to go vote for the people that will vote 
and pass laws to take away every one of your rights. If you don't have a reasonable and rational and common sense approach to removing gun laws in the right way, but also understanding that there's a lot of uneducated and stupid people out there that when you just say, everyone should have you know, whatever, machine guns, and it should be sold in schools because that's an unconstitutional law to ban that, people are going to go, whoa, 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 hold, hold on, hold on. Y you think first graders should be allowed to, to bring a machine gun to kindergarten? You're not going to win over the middle. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that one. All right, next comment we have... On the range report, Springfield Echelon, the best modular polymer striker fired pistol. Or I think it was a question mark. I, I, can, I can't see what the t exact title is here. But Rocketman 9mm said, just casually accusing the integrity of other gun, uh, sorry, of other YouTubers. Nice. Well, guess what? In that video, and you guys know how I run my channel, I don't speak negatively about anybody. I never mention anybody by name on the main channel. Um, and I don't want people mentioning other people's names in my comment section. It's not a tit for tat thing. It's not a comparison video. It's none of that. In that video, I simply made the fact or said the statement that other YouTubers, when the, when the Echelon was released, all of a sudden, all on the same day when the media embargo was lifted, all produced glowing reviews Magically, they all received multiple guns and holsters and magazines and free ammunition. And lo and behold, they all had positive reviews. I didn't say who that was. Now, if you want to infer that, that is up to you. And there are more people than I even know that made those videos. But I wasn't talking about anybody specifically. And I went out of my way to do that. So this person obviously is of... Uh, or lacks the ability to understand that nuance. It, it does sadden me because really I think that in the gun community, we got to work, work together, but we have to be smart. We have to be nuanced in our debate and we have to understand and see the bigger picture. All right, next one. Beretta, or sorry, Ranger Port Beretta ARX 100, uh, the 556 rifle in FDE. This is one of my older videos. NATO Potato said, sight mark spotted, opinion discarded. Well, this one was kind of funny to me because when I get a firearm in for review, many times if the owner of that firearm, because I always respect the people's firearms that, you know, they lend into my channel. Uh, for example, here I have the, uh, let me get it out, out here, the Sig Spear uh, 5.56 five, pistol. This is D's, and he has a Trigicon on this with a, with a magnifier. Everything is set up the way that he wants it to be set up. So I'm going to review the gun with his setup. If it has iron sights, I'll use iron sights. If it has optics, I'll use those optics. But I'm reviewing the gun, and that range report had nothing to do with the optic at all. It was all about the gun. I don't even talk about the optic in that review. But once again, somebody who is closed-minded and incapable of deeper thought and not understand the nuance of what they were watching thought that they would just... Uh, I mean, you don't have to like my opinion. You don't have to agree with my opinion. That's totally fine. I mean, whatever. But to say opinion discarded because the gun that, I, that was lent to the channel had a sight mark on it, I think that's pretty silly. And I think I got one more here. Uh, here we go. Uh, this one made me laugh this 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 week. On the range report and discussion, the Kimber K6S revolver in 357 Magnum. Tev MT10 said, "It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It's loud. Just save our time next time." You know, one of the things about gun reviewers that bother me, that I try to be different, is I have or I create content from the perspective of what I think is an average gun owner. That is what I do. I'm not an expert shot. I am not Rambo. I do not, uh, I've never served in the military. I'm not a law enforcement uh, officer, never have been. I don't want to be. I, I don't have fantasies of end of the world scenarios. I don't have fantasies of using my guns in self-defense. Um, I have none of that. 
Uh, I don't believe that shooting the most powerful caliber or the biggest gun or the biggest caliber stuffed in the tiniest gun is something to be proud of. If you enjoy that, I think it's great. But I like to think that I create content from the perspective of, I said, the average gun owner or somebody that's looking to get good information without all of the weird fluff and the tactical bearded guys. You know, for example, if you go and watch a review of, let's just say, a reviewer like Grand Thumb, okay? A Grand Thumb gets all kitted out, right? He has his... He has his night vision on. He's wearing plate armor. He's out rolling in the ground. Most people that are going to go out and buy the, or be told to go buy the Kember K6S revolver are probably people like myself, or maybe they're ladies, you know, because people always tell ladies, oh, you can't rack a slide on a semi-auto. Go buy a revolver. And they're like, okay, what, what, what revolver? This Kember looks good. Well, let me get some information on it. Well, I can tell you a little petite lady shooting a 357 Magnum uh, snub nose revolver is going to feel that recoil. You know, when my wife was getting into guns, she thought the small guns would recoil less. In actuality, they recoil more if you understand the laws of motion, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And then, there, of course, there's, you know, inertia and all that kind of stuff. And you realize that you, if you shove a really powerful round into a very small gun, and that gun might not be as ergonomic, sure, ballistically, it might save your butt one day, but it might not be the most fun gun to shoot. And because of that, you might not go to the range and shoot it and train with it and get used to it. So I do these reviews and go, hey, I want a gun that I'm going to enjoy shooting that's pleasurable for me. Because if it's not pleasurable to shoot, I don't really want it. Now, you could want it, and if you believe that, you know, like, like you want one of those Magnum Research uh, BFRs, the, the big frame revolvers, but you have one calls it the big effing revolvers, and you want to put up, you know, what is it, a, um, uh, was it a 4570, uh, you know, government round into a revolver this, of this big, you have at it. If you, if you like that kind of stuff, more power to you. But not everybody does. And I don't think shooting the smallest gun in the biggest caliber shows anything. It doesn't show that, that, that you're alpha. It doesn't show that you're better than anybody else. I believe it's important that people get the right equipment for them. Um, one of the examples that I use in music uh, when, I'm, when I'm teaching when it comes to picking instruments and things, um, and I borrow this from a colleague uh, a while back, he said, you know, when Shaquille O'Neal was playing basketball, he wore size 18 tennis shoes. But because he was a professional basketball player and was very good, do we put somebody that's in middle school starting to learning or learning to play basketball, do we put them in size 18 tennis shoes? Because that's what Shaquille O'Neal does. No, because the shoes aren't going to fit them and they're going to be absolutely useless. So you want to put people in the equipment that's going to fit their body and what they need it to do. So do I think the Kimber KS revolver is a fun gun to shoot? Mm -mm. No, it's not. Did it hurt my hands? Yeah, it, it hurt my hands. And so I would like to think if it hurt my hands, I'm an experienced shooter. I'm six foot tall, 225 pounds, okay? And if it hurts me a little bit and makes it uncomfortable, well, most likely if you're a 150 pound lady, might not be the most, you know, or the best choice for you. Might hurt you a little bit. You might want to go in a little bit different direction, but it may be great. But I think it's important that you get that data point. And there's people out there like this Tev MT10 or whatever. They obviously think that if you're not one of these tactical bearded operators or you're not shooting the, the craziest, most most powerful stuff or, or, or you are honest about how a gun is or feels ergonomically, whatever. I mean, he doesn't have to like my uh, videos, but, you know, I just banned him. I'm not going to put up with that kind of stuff. You know, I know. It, it wasn't necessarily super mean, but it, it just kind of ticks me off that, you know, like it hurt, it hurt. I'm just telling people what I felt, but you know, whatever. But anyway, those are kind of like the mean comments of the week. So what do you guys think? I think I started off with a, with a, a, 
a, a real gem there with the go F yourself. But anyway, uh, I got these pistols to go put in the safes and get ready to take to the range. Um, I have to go in and edit this video to put in the comments. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. You guys remember the word of the day from earlier in the video? Use it in the comments below. So I know you saw and watched to the end. So I guess that's it. Yeah, so I think it's all I wanted to talk about. So anyway, as I said, let me know what you think in the comment section below, and thank you for joining me here in the garage as always. So as always, thanks for watching.